I'm Stephanie Strickland with GeekWire Studios here at AWS reInvent. You can hear all the chatter on the floor, a very busy, productive, interesting and fun day. They've brought it all together for us. I would like to introduce you now to our esteemed guest from Do It. We have with us John Purcell, the Chief Product Officer, as well as Jarrett Childs, the Chief Services Officer. Gentlemen, how are you? Wonderful, thanks for having us. Doing well, doing well, thank you. So happy you're here. Start by telling me, what is Do It? And how does Do It fit into this grand scheme of all these businesses providing solutions to customers? Where do you fit in? Sure, well if you think about the businesses around us today, you know, attending the show and so forth, these are all companies attempting to sort of penetrate the cloud, harness the power of the cloud to run their business. But it's not easy, that's a very complicated, complex, sophisticated series of challenges. And really that's where Do It comes in. And we provide support for those companies in really three key ways. We start by providing intelligent technology to help harness, to provide insights, analytics on your usage of the cloud. We follow that with deep, deep expertise and advisory services to help you harness that most effectively. And then thirdly, we provide it in a very disruptive economic model to really make that a compelling value proposition. It's pretty unique and the cloud companies, AWS included, are seeing that on a daily basis. What's the secret sauce that makes it disruptive? <laughs> well, you know, to me, I think it's, it's really like a triangle of value that we bring to the table. We have an amazing product suite that John's team helps build. Uh, a do it consult, you will, where people have all kinds of insights into what's going on in their environments across cloud platforms, not just AWS. Uh, and then we back that with the advisory organization, the consultancy that I have. And so it's not just a services company, it's not just a products company, it's the services and the products and the power that they bring together that makes it really valuable with an irresistible commercial model underneath it all. So. I was looking at your website and one of the things that uh, really stuck out at me is the way that we described online gaming and the nature of what Do It provides to help optimize monetization in that space. It's one very tangible example that I think a lot of people across anyone who's got kids or not, even really adults, right? We all understand what that looks like today. Can you walk me through a little bit about what the company offers in, in that type of an experience? How are you helping customers do a better job monetizing their wares? Yeah, well, I'll take a stab at that. I mean, gaming is one example, but I mean, we have uh, consultants around the world that are very, very senior. You know, these are not like the traditional low level kind of support organization. We talk about support, supports table stakes but it's truly a consultancy. And so when we have customers, whether they're in gaming or any industry that come to us, chances are we have someone in this organization that actually comes from like a CTO background, a founder background, a lead tech, a principal architect, that are meeting with these customers and sharing firsthand experiences about you know, the things that they've seen and how they help to help them evolve. And I think one thing that's really different is because our model is more advisory and consultancy oriented, in order for us to scale well, we want our customers to be really proficient be self-proficient. So every time they bring a, a challenge to us, a request to us, it's not just solve the problem and move on. Uh, it's definitely not like a bespoke ProServe model where we're charging them for all the work and it bloats and there's change orders. But as we help them solve their problem, we help make sure that they are along for that ride. They're in the driver's seat solving those problems and we're guiding them through it. So they build a proficiency that makes them more efficient as they grow. Uh, less reliance on expensive third-party services. And whether it's gaming, which is a good example, or anything else, we bring that same kind of DNA to the table on every customer that we help. I have to congratulate you both and the entire company on the strategic collaboration agreement. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. It's so obviously pivotal to be partnering with AWS. Um, tell me about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on that too. Um, first off, we're very excited to embark on this. It's a five-year commitment, $5 billion in revenue that we're going to grow. I've got a lot of peers and friends in the industry that said five billion, are y'all crazy? But honestly, with the, the partnership that we have with AWS and the trajectory that we've been on, it feels like a very natural trajectory in the collaboration uh, that we have together to go achieve this. So we're very excited. Um, it's going to fund four key areas that I'll touch on. Um, the first of which is application modernization. And when we talk about application modernization, a lot of time what that means to our customers is helping them migrate to the cloud through modernization not a traditional shift, but helping them to develop very cloud native application architectures. It's really resilient. Um, helps reduce the mundane operational overhead when you do it right. Uh, so that's the first area, so we're excited about that. The second area that we'll be spending a lot of time investing more in is cost optimization. Cost optimization, I mean, it's a theme everywhere you go. It's AI, cost optimization, right? Uh, cost optimization for us is something that's very inherent to our platform, our do it console and the way that we help people there. 
but also the services that we bring to the table. So app modernization, cost optimization, security and posture reviews is the third area. Uh, that security has always been, uh, I think the, the market has matured a lot and people have more general comfort and understanding that they can be very secure in the cloud, but it's never a stagnant target. Security is always a moving target. You're adopting new features, new technologies, you're deploying new applications. All along the way, you need to have a partner that can really help you address the security posture of our make sure it's tight. So we'll be investing there, and that's also something where our platform plays a role. So again, you hear this theme of like services and platform together that makes the power. Um, and the fourth area, and I'd be remiss not to say, or just how we develop our go-to-market strategy is a big part of what you do with something like this. But I think what's interesting about do it in our go-to-market strategy, not only how we invest and develop our own, a big part of it is how we help our customers with their go-to-market strategies. And a good example of that is when we call a program we call ISV Go Global. So we help independent software vendors in their own strategy in accelerating to the cloud, accelerating into the marketplace in the cloud. We even have some interesting funding programs where we help them with their own marketing needs. You know, I'm going to bring it back to you then on the product side. I kind of want to know where the company's headed in that direction as well. So many interesting things, innovative things on the horizon, really. Yeah, sure. So, so just to build on what Jared was describing and some of the areas that we, that, we'll, that we will explore as part of the SCA, we'll build on some of the existing programs and practices we've, we've built over the years. Um, there's sort of three key areas I think we're focused on investing in the product and R&D for the next 12 plus months. The first is what we call cloud unit economics, right? which is sort of taking this idea of cloud cost and what am I paying and how do I get that under control, but really taking a more verticalized across the layers of your cloud stack and a broad perspective across every piece of IT spend that's contributing to your total bill of goods or COGS if you like, and looking at a fully integrated, fully loaded cost analysis to determine what is it costing me to serve an individual customer. When you can look at the world that way, then you're truly, I think, getting your arms around business viability and the correct sort of proportion of scale. So that's probably the first key area where we're focused on. Of course, that all depends on the second area, which is what we'll call you know, real-time data modeling, right? All of this depends on having ready access, quick access to a wide variety of different data sets and data sources. And when you can apply some of our existing machine learning techniques, you can look for insights and signals in the data that frankly you or I wouldn't be able to find just if we were looking, right? So the system and the intelligence of the system is going to surface more and more of that and, and bring that to you in, in, in closer to real time so you can make operational decisions on that basis. And then the third and final area I think just broadly won't be a surprise to you is the generalized area of AI and ML. I haven't right? heard a word about it this if whole I time. If I, didn't, no, AI, right? it. <laughs> if I didn't mention that to you, I think I'd be remiss. <laughs> but but it, we're, you know, we too have to be uh, sort of ahead of that, that trend as much as we can, and it's true for the services side of the business. We have a lot of inbound questions and interest in how, what should I be doing with respect to AI across our customer base. We've been invested in, in the areas of AI and ML for many, many years in terms of how we perform data an an analysis. What we're now doing based on some of the innovations this year is we're leveraging OpenAI and large language models to find different ways to expose that in a conversational sense with the end user. And as we think about 2024, we'll harness that to deliver new experiences to users, operators in the cloud and developers in the cloud. So it's sort of three key areas. The conversations that we're having this year about AI are dramatically different than last year. It's been fascinating to talk to thought leaders like yourselves about what has changed just in the past 365 days. I want to ask you about, it's no secret if you've paid any attention to technology news uh, that a lot of companies are facing some pretty significant headwinds. Um, how can something like your partnership with AWS really help the customers that you solve move forward and past that? Yeah, I, I think we've certainly seen um, a sense of hesitation in the market, right? Whether that's tangible headwinds, whether it's economic pressure, are we in a recession, are we not in a recession? Sometimes I think we talk ourselves into that a little bit, but there's no doubt that has translated into some sort of a hesitation, maybe a little bit of conservation across the customer. I mean, we have over 3,500 active customers today, and we see those patterns across those cohorts. Um, the good news for us is I think 
the origins of our business were built upon helping companies right size and, and prepare for growth. And so even in those instances where we're, we're pausing maybe, we're choosing to conserve this year ahead of future growth, do it can help in either of those motions. Right? We'll help you conserve, we'll help you find opportunities to optimize, save money, you know, choose the right moments to invest. So that way you do, we grow with you. I would add on that too, from a consultancy angle, like economic headwinds are sometimes stimulating, stimulating. Uh, customers, so we'll take a pause, but they take it to say, am I doing the right things? You know, and, and not necessarily just like basic cost optimization of resource, that's table stakes, but you know, should I rethink the way I'm using the cloud altogether? Um, the type of consultancy that I already described that we have, you know, it's not the low level break fix, it's usually very strategic type of consultancy that we're performing for customers to support. So we have an opportunity with over 3,000 approaching 4,000 customers where we see some very significant patterns and the kinds of requests that come in um, that help us think about you know, what, what we should do. So that could tie that back to maybe things like what we're doing with the SCA uh, and why not, AI. So generative AI, for example, is a topic that comes up a lot. I think economic headwinds can, can stimulate that too because people are saying, I need to do something different in my business. Is this something that can help me? And based on like the, the volume of customers that we have that are asking these questions, we're identifying where in large the market is in this journey. And then we can use some of these, uh, the partnership, the, the agreement, the funds that we have to develop what we call these accelerators. So Gen AI is one of those where we, we've developed uh, accelerators to go meet with customers and say, All right, let's look at your business use cases. Here's common use cases that we see for AI or generative AI in your model. Uh, help them identify proof of concept opportunities, first movers, if you will, and then help them through that proof of concept journey. Uh, so again, they're developing the skills so that whenever they, they finish that proof of concept or they take something to market, they don't have to come back for more help on the next one necessarily. We're happy to help them if they do, but they've developed more of those skills in-house and more the capability to go identify their own things and move forward at the company. Uh, so that's something that we see in those, in those cases as well. That's a very interesting way of thinking about um, a business challenge in that regard when we talk about those uh, economic headwinds. I do have to ask you, you know, given that you've got your strategic collaboration agreement and everything on the horizon for you, where does Do It go next? You have a very broad horizon coming at you in the next five years and beyond. What's next for the company? Yeah, we do. We're, we're, we couldn't be more excited about where we go from here, honestly, and it's, a lot of that is connected to the, to the agreement we've, we've signed with, with AWS, but we've worked, we've worked extremely hard over the number of years to build ourselves, build our company to the place that you see it you know, today. And I think the agreement we've signed with AWS is, is recognition of the work we've put in especially to break into the AWS ecosystem and build a growing business there and help, and a, and a very healthy growing customer base. Um, well, it doesn't stop there. We are a multi-cloud organization. We operate today across three of the major public clouds with more to come, right? So we, we have big targets to hit. We're excited to go, go, go get those targets within the AWS ecosystem but that's just a fraction of our, of our overall strategy and we're excited to go, to go win it. Yeah, it'd be hard to add a lot more to that. You know, I think the, uh, I've talked about the products that we are, John's products and the, the level of expertise that we bring. You know, this is a 10 year old company, but in earnest our AWS journey really began just a few years ago. And so I think the SCA, you know, it really kind of solidifies the true beginning of that journey now. You know, we've worked very, very hard over the last few years to build credibility in the market, to build the trust of our customer base, and like this proves that we've achieved that, and now we're funding this next phase, or partnering this next phase to go achieve this. And I think between you know the products and the services that we develop with this commercial model, I think it's truly differentiated. I look forward to talking to you next year and hearing about those real world use examples as you really dive into this. Congratulations on all of the successes. Jared, John from Do It, really appreciate your time. Thank you for having us. I'm Steph Strickland, you've been watching GeekWire Studios.